Skill number five is the, the first time that we do stuff with the Pythagorean Theorem where I think it's pretty cool. Okay, and it's pretty easy too. Now you still need all your, your underlying skills. You need to know A, B, and C side of a triangle, and you need to know what a Pythagorean Theorem is to take those sides of a triangle and plug them in to the Pythagorean Theorem. So if you need those, go back and, and look at the previous skills. But we know that if this is a right angle and this is a right triangle, then this side is 6, and this other side, let's just put it in, in red here this time. The red and blue sides would be touching the right angle, so those are my legs, those are my A and B. Okay. Now, that means that the side that's not touching it is called the hypotenuse, or C. And, and you know, that gets a little bit confusing, but, but X is just a way of saying we don't know how long this side is. And we need to find a missing side of right triangle if we're given the two legs, the A and B. So make sure that, one, they actually give you the A and B. And two, I'm going to show you what it looks like. And there's a, a little confusing part right at the end, but it's really not bad if you just focus and, and work with me step by step. Let's go get the Pythagorean Theorem written down here. Let's go throw in 6 for A and 8 for B. Make sure that we're leaving the second power hovering above them. And the C. You see how in the formula it's got the, the second power right there? Well, we don't want C squared. We want just plain old C. And that's what's going to be the trick. Take your calculator out. Type in 6 squared plus 8 squared. It's just like what I've, I showed you on the previous one right there, right? Let me clear that. 6 squared plus 8 squared. We're using the uh, x to the second power button right there, right? And we see that we get 100. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100. Well, this side is not 100, okay? 100 is definitely bigger than 8 and 6, but that seems a little extreme. Well, how do I get that square? How do I get the second power off of c? So this is what I'm, I'm trying to show you, the last step. Throw a square root sign on the other side to get rid of 2 on c to the second power. We're trying to get rid of this little guy, right? So what are, what are you talking about, Mr. Tate? Well, if you took your finger and you flicked, if you could imagine that you're just flicking the exponent and just knocking it onto the other side, it lands in a different form on this left side or the other side of the equal sign. It lands as a square root sign. It lands right there, and it leaves the C right here. Okay. Now, you have to understand what's, what's happening here. The C to the second power means a number times itself is 100, which we already know is 10, right? 10 times 10 is 100. That's why I chose this one. But when you put a square root sign over here, and, and some of you guys at this point in eighth grade year, we've not hit square roots yet. What's happening is, is that this is asking a very special question, kind of like absolute value. It says, hey, can you tell me what number times itself would equal what's underneath me? So what number times itself equals 100? But it gets even better than that. We still have our calculator right here. And right above the 7, there's the square root sign. And you can type in the 100. And you hit enter, and this is your calculator's way of answering, hey, I know what number times itself is 100. It's 10. And so this is the answer. C is the square root of 100, or a better way of writing it is just 10 equals C.